and uh, she had witnessed when she worked for Sprint somebody stealing a phone. So she goes to court, they ask for a description, and she said, oh, he was about so high, African-American, and they're like, wait, stop. Are you sure he was African-American? And I said, yes, because I was just praying that she'd just not be sarcastic like she normally is. And, uh, <clears throat> and so, uh, yes, are you positive? Yes, and they said, oh, and then they conferred, and the case was thrown out because the guy they had in custody was white. So that was that one. Then um, Tuesday, Noel, uh, Hannah calls, and she went to a Packers game and got hit by a deer, and her car is the worst off. So, and uh, we only have, um, not comprehensive, but liability on it. So, yes, so we're not sure what we're going to do there. And then Christiana called in tears the next day because she had missed an assignment. It was a small one. She's working on her master's and just kicking herself. She said, I tell my kids, school kids, they have to do their homework. And here, I'd miss mine. And she's all in tears. And uh, about 15 minutes later, sends me um, a reply from the teacher to an email saying, we all make mistakes. Um, if you get it in the next two days, you'll get full credit. So it's like, hey, God is in control of all these things, right? So I don't know if you've had a week like that this week. If not, hold on, because your week is coming. But remember, God is the one in control of our lives. Let us stand and greet each other in the name of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Good morning. standing, now you've sat down. <clears throat> this is our exercise for today. Uh, let's praise the Lord. I will call upon the
times of peace I've come to know, though my heart and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for my soul. I can say it is well. Jesus has overcome, and the grave is I 
I couldn't say the words better than myself. Isn't that a beautiful video? With those who have served um, in our military, please stand. You're already standing, Norm. Let's honor them. <coughs> I know Veterans Day was yesterday, but um, uh, I just uh, want to honor you. Thank you for your service to our country. We have quite a few on our prayer um, list today. There's two prayer shawls up here. One is for Vern Hall. He is not doing well. And um, if you would keep him in your prayers, and we will deliver that. And also, thank you, also um, Bill Glimpse, and many of you may not know him, he started coming a few months ago um, and to a second service. He sits here at the front. He's the neighbor of Bill and Susan Bess, and uh, he fell down 20 flights of stairs. He's 93, I think it is, and um, I went to see him. He has two fractures in his back, and one of them, he has to be, he's immobilized right now, lying flat on his bed, and he has to have surgery, and he's in his 90s. So any way you look at this, it's not good. So, um, l so the other one will go to him. Norm is having surgery on Tuesday. And when he comes back to us, he's going to be singing soprano. So is that not awesome? Uh, <coughs> actually, uh, we would need him in the alto section. So that's my prayer. So anyway, um, Norm, our prayers go with you. And um, uh, let us pray that his voice, his singing voice comes back very quickly. Corinne Lamb passed away this week, and the visitation <coughs> is on Monday from 5 to 7 at Denzer's, and the funeral will be Tuesday <coughs> excuse me, at 1 o'clock. And then George Copas uh, collapsed at um, St. John's Arena. He went to his beloved OSU football team. Um, he hardly ever misses a uh, home game. In fact, talking with Lucille last night, she said there was only one get home game that he's missed that she can recall, and that was when he had a funeral, um, and so the funeral uh, took priority. Um, he is not doing well. Um, I know uh, prayers went out that he'd had a heart attack, but in actual fact, he did not display um, the symptoms of a heart attack. They're really not sure exactly what happened. Um, brain scans initially said that they're not sure he had a stroke either, but it's too early to tell. So they have his blood being cooled, so his whole body is cold, so that the there is no swelling, and it will be 24 to 48 hours before they really know anything once they start bringing him off some of those machines. He's on a ventilator, a respirator, so he's not doing anything on his own, but he had CPR, and um, it's not good. Um, Lucille was in pretty good spirits yesterday. I s went and spent uh, an hour with her. And um, she said, I've decided that I'm just not going to break down. We don't know anything, so we're going to wait. So pray. Just pray, okay? And then we'll keep you updated through the prayer list as we know more. Um, I think, oh, no, I have two more here. <laughs> Connie Cook, this is from Linda and Dale. Cook. Connie Cook um, is starting chemo this week for uterine cancer. So let us remember her. And uh, Cheryl asks us to pray for a troubled, a troubled teen with depression. So with all that on our hearts, <laughs> let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Lord, this morning, our hearts are heavy. So many people we have known <coughs> who have either come to the end of their life or they're struggling for life. So many people with so many problems. And Lord, all we can do is to lift them all to you, which we do right now. Surround not only the ones that we've mentioned by name today, but all those who need help, surround them with your love. Comfort them, Lord. And no matter what our desires are, let your will be done. Take away pain. Take away the tears. 
take away a dis our discomfort and their discomfort and just bring your kingdom to life here on earth right now in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, there are many who are despairing around the world. But those who know you know that the end is not here yet. But we know how it, life does end, and it ends in eternal glory. So, Lord, keep that hope and that promise and that vision alive in us so we can pass that on to others. Because that's how we make it through the tragedies of life. Lord, be with our church. Help us to be that beacon of light in our community. And help us to discover how we can reach out into the community that needs to hear about you so we can make disciples more effectively. And Lord, for our families, we lift them to you. Be with them each step of the way. And may those who have drifted away from your love come back so that we can know that they too will be part of this glorious heavenly kingdom when it comes. And today, we lift up the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who are trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thought he was going to preach for a minute then. <coughs> if you're able, please stand for the reading of the scripture today, <coughs> which comes from Romans 12, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, 
I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is in leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. This is the word of God from long ago for the people of God today. Thanks be to God. Let's, uh, oh, you may be seated. Rather. <laughs> let's sit down, I guess. Oh, gosh. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> oh, Lord, we need you in our lives. And now, as we expand upon your word, fill our hearts with love, not only for our church, but for each other and those outside these four walls that we may not even know, but we love them because they're yours. In your name we pray. Amen. So today is Consecration Sunday. I know, and you'll go, oh gosh, we're going to hear about money and pledging and all that good stuff. Well, yes and no, because I always like to do something a little different. And I've chosen this scripture for a, for a very specific purpose. What does it mean to be consecrated? It's a good question, isn't it? To be consecrated, not concentrated, Consecrated means to be fully given to God. How many of us can confidently stand today and say, I am fully given to God? I don't see many hands, and I may be standing, but I would like to tell you I have, but there's always a part of me that I hold on to. Consecrated also means to be made holy. But it's an active word. It's an ongoing word. It's something we are headed toward. So each one of us is consecrated because we're heading toward giving more of ourselves to God. After the Egyptians, uh, not the Egyptians, after the Israelites escaped from Egypt. Do you remember the event that preceded that? The Passover. When the final plague God sent was the angel of death to kill every firstborn. Now, I want you to think about that for a minute. Every firstborn male. There were grandparents, great-grandparents, fathers, sons, we tend to think it was the children who had just been born. But including women, how many of you were first born? Okay, look around. Look how many people would be gone if that was happening today. Every first born male in this case, including animals and humans. So to commemorate that as the 
Israel's, Israelites left Egypt, God said, you will consecrate to me, give to me the firstborn of all your children, all your animals, all the first fruits, all the first of your harvest to remember that you did not lose your firstborn. The Israelites didn't do a very good job of that. And today, because Christ died on the cross to make a new covenant with us, he says to us, I want you to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. How do we do that? Paul tells us in Romans 12, three things that we've got to do. The first is to offer our bodies as living sacrifices. What does that really mean? Well, we have to look into Paul's writings, and we've been studying Paul for a while now. Do you remember he talks all the time about not being bound to the law, the law of Moses, which said, for your sins, you have to bring an animal to the altar to be sacrificed, right? I don't know how many thousands during the time of sheep, pigeons, whatever, bulls were slaughtered for the sins of the people. But Paul said when Jesus came, that was all over. No more sacrifices except our bodies are living sacrifices. You see, God doesn't want dead animals on an altar. That doesn't do God any good. It doesn't spread God's word. But rather, he wants our living bodies to be him in the world. We are to offer ourselves to God in all we do, all we say, every day, everywhere we go. Whew, that's quite a job, isn't it? Let alone breathing and walking. We are to give to God and love him with our hearts and soul and strength and mind. All parts of our own body. And the one that controls all of them is our mind. I'm glad other people can't get into my head. It's not a good place to be. How about yours? Do your minds wonder whether you want to, them to or not? You see something and you're distracted to it. I have a very hard time if I go into a place and the television is on. My eyes just kind of glance and then I just get involved in whatever it is, whether the sound's on or not. And I really have to work at that, and I have been working at it, that I try to completely block it off because I want to be fully focused on the per person I've gone to visit. Here is what the message says in Romans 12.1. I love this description. So here's what I want you to do. This is Paul writing. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for God. Isn't that awesome? Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for God. So everything you do, you're doing for God. Think about your last week. Are you proud of everything you did, you said, you went places you went? Everything we do, we do for God. So we are offering ourselves, every part of us, to God as a living sacrifice. The second thing we're called to be consecrated about is to not conform to this world, but have transformed minds. Our mind controls everything else that happens in our body. When our mind no longer works, 
we're dead. Here's what the message says in verse 2. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you and develops well-formed maturity in you. One of the best things I did for myself was to get rid of cable. I actually have to really choose what I watch in Netflix and Amazon. I'm f I don't just flip through channels. And it has helped me focus my mind more on God. Now, that was for me. It's not for everybody. I'm not saying go out and get rid of cable, okay? I'm not doing it, saying that. Because I thought, I, how am I not going to be able to watch all the games I want to watch, etc., etc.? But I just did it. We are so caught up in this world in which we live that we are unable to give our minds fully to God, and so we can't be fully transformed. It's something we have to work on every day, and it's very hard. But what helps us is when we immerse our minds in God's word, in scripture. And there are people in our churches every day who only ever hear scripture on a Sunday morning when it's read. That's not enough. And if we are going to try to change and affect other people's lives, our own lives have to be changed. We have to immerse ourselves in God's thoughts and how do we do that? In prayer, both by talking to God and that other word that's very hard, listening to God. The third thing we need to do as we're called to be consecrated is to offer our whole community of faith to God. Listen to how the message puts Romans 12, 4 through 6. In this way, we are like the various parts of the human body. Remember I talked about heart, mind, soul, and strength. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about now is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of this body. So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently, excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves to each other or trying to be something we are not. We all have gifts, and Paul says, just as we are made up of different parts, so our community of faith, our church, is made up of, of different parts, and we cannot do without a single one. Think of the person in this church that you like the least. Now, come on, I know there's somebody. And think of the people that you love to be around. Every single person in this church has a function and a purpose. And when we come together as one body, we can better hear God's will and go out and do that. We lost a beloved friend a week ago, Francis Foos. And um, her words in uh, the small poem book that she wrote have really touched my heart. And as I was preparing this, I remembered something she wrote in one of her poems, and I want to read it to you. It's the last three verses of a poem enabled talents. This is what she said. 
God put us here for a reason. We don't know what that reason might be. He gives us each one many talents to use the best way we can see. Sometimes the talent that God gives us may not be a tangible thing. Maybe a word or a touch that is shared will help a sad heart learn to sing. God did give a talent to each one of us. We just have to find what that talent might be. Bow your head, say a prayer, touch your neighbor in thought, and your faith will help you to see. Consecration Sunday is about us giving the best of ourselves to God, not only individually, but as a church. It is our way to becoming holy. Each of you has a pledge card. I'd like you to pull that out now. This was in the newsletter that went out in the um, beginning of November. So I know you've all looked at it and read it and you know what's on it. <coughs> Not. And today, well, I'm going to give you a few moments to be filling this out as I continue to talk. Yes, pledging is partly about the gifts of money that we use to support this church. It's a currency that we have in our lives, right? Really, there's not that many things we can do without money ha exchanging hands in some form. And the church relies on our gifts of pledging. So we're asking you today, and um, a couple or a family can just fill out one card. So you circle I or we. Do you commit to pray for our church and our denomination? Do you commit to attend Sunday morning worship as often as possible so that you can be part of the body? You can check those boxes or not. I'm going to talk about serving in just a minute. And then, what about your tithing? What about the offering that you're saying you're willing to give? Many people don't like pledges. I don't particularly like pledges. But a church budget is a really weird thing. It's nothing like a business budget, is it, Pete? It's a very weird animal uh, indeed. And our budget will be based on what we think might come in next year. Your pledges help us to realize decent and wholesome finances for this church. So I urge you to put a number down. You're not held to this. You lose your job and you can't pay it. Well, that's life. No one's bound by this. But it helps us to be able to budget. And there's two areas, general fund or missions. I just want to say one word about general fund. Many people want to give to a certain item in our budget, and that's fine. It's designated giving. However, every single fund is part of the general fund. And sometimes people will give to a certain um, item when maybe another item needs money right now. Let me give you a great example, a very recent one. I love Ben. <coughs> Ben's helped me out many times. And not long ago, we started having, no, it's been a year now, the back fell off the casing for the microphone, okay? And there was no clip on it. Um, it was totally worn out. I can't get it off now. <coughs> and uh, this part came off, so I was putting it in my pocket. Now, many of you know, women's pockets are not very deep. So I only had certain pants I could wear because I didn't want this falling out. That was a nuisance, but it was okay. Well, a few weeks ago, I was having trouble with it, and I went back and talked to Ben, and the front part just wouldn't keep on, and the battery wouldn't, wasn't held in, and we were having trouble with sound. 
And I said, I don't know what's wrong with it. Ben said, well, there's supposed to be a pin that goes all the way through that holds that top casing on. And it's gone. Well, I don't know what happened to it. So he fixed it with a paper clip. He put it all the way through and bent it. Well, that was the first week was fine. But the next two weeks, this paper clip wouldn't stay close to it. And it kept poking my leg. And I had enough one day, and I said to Erica, that's it. We're ordering a new one. I said, I'm done with it. It cost $230 just for this little bit, okay? So um, we ordered it. <coughs> there wasn't enough in the sound fund. Where did the money come from? The general fund, which, is, which the sound fund is part of. We had the money there to pay for it. But if I had announced that, somebody would have written a check and said, I want this to go to the sound fund, right? Well, it really doesn't make any difference whether it goes to the sound fund or the general fund. So, you can keep your designated giving, but I would hope that most people just give general giving so we can apportion the money where it needs to go. That's enough of that. You can also sign up for e-tithing if you would like to do that. Now I want you to flip the card over. <coughs> because I want you today to focus on your part in the body of Christ here at this church. We say we're an outgoing church. But if you look at this list, look at all the things we do that basically are in church and help ourselves. And then how many we do in the community. I just want to highlight a few. There's many things here. And on the other side where it says, I, we would like to serve in, these are the things that we do. And I would love to see something written in that area for every single person in the church. You can see the things that we do, baby quilts for baptisms. And some people aren't able to do that anymore. We need people to step up. I've got two baptisms, one next week and one December 10th. And I have one baby, sh baby quilt right now, so I need another one. Caroling. Many people don't come caroling, and I really don't know why. It is such a joy. It's so much fun. I don't care if you can sing or not. Bill Bess cannot sing, and I'm not just saying that. He te will tell you he cannot sing. He's coming because he wants to be there to greet the shut-ins. They love it when we do that. So what are you doing December 10th? Oh, that's right. You're coming caroling with us. The choirs. We always need new, need new members. Right, Julie? Communion stewards. I know they, can need, they need help. Our discipleship program. We need help with nursery and Sunday school teachers and junior church. When we just started junior church up, do you know that Laura got seven teams, that each team comprises two people, seven teams to work with our kids. That is awesome. Bible studies, small groups. You don't have to have a degree to start a small group. All you need is willingness and love of God. Start a small group. Ask a few people to come around so you can share Jesus' love with each other. Funeral meals, we always need help with those. And unfortunately, we're getting more and more of them. Greeters and acolytes, you're going to hear about this even more, particularly next week. We're going to do it differently. Instead of four people calling around to sign people up to be greeters and acolytes and liturgists, we are going to sign up, have a sign-up sheet, which will be here next week. And you will sign up if you want to be one. Not on a day, you just put your name down. We're going to form a list and use it as a rotation. And everybody will be given the list for next year. And if you can't do it on the day you're assigned, guess what you're going to do? Call somebody and trade. You know what that does? It puts the responsibility back on the person who's doing it. Because right now, some of the commitment is not there. And if you're going to sign up, I want you to be committed to doing whatever you sign up for. We have the live nativity coming up December 2nd. I'm going to be there. Will I see you? We've got men's breakfast, UNW, parking lot helpers, the prayer shawl ministry. Lillian and Ben need help with the computer and sound. 
and they'll be willing to teach you. Not sure how much teaching they'll get. No, I'm joking. Ushers, Wally needs people to be ushers. Oh, I've mentioned UMW. And visitation teams, we have revamped how we do visitation. We're reaching more people. We have three teams, and we need more people to say, yes, once, twice a month, I will go out and visit a number of people. And, of course, Vacation Bible School, which was huge this year, and we're going to be starting planning for next year. Now, these are the things we do for and in the community. We're starting up a brand new community breakfast. You'll be hearing details later. It's probably going to come in the spring. We want to offer a breakfast, top-notch quality breakfast to the community. We're going to ask for donations, um, and we need your help. So when the sign-up sheets come out, I know each one of you are going to be first in line to sign up, right? Can you give a couple of hours on a Saturday morning to help with that? and to reach out to our neighbors to really get to know them. The Laundry Love Ministry, where we actually go out and, um, to the laundromat, and um, we don't do people's laundry, we pay for it and build relationships with them. For some people, that's the only opportunity they have to do their laundry, and for others, it's supplements so they can spend money on food. You get to know the people. And we have plans to expand that ministry along with some other ministries. More will come later. But unless we can help support what's going on, Linda needs your help. We need more people to say, I'm willing to come and help with Laundry Love Ministry. Leap and outle Outreach. It's a ministry we partner with, and there are very few people here who will take a Tuesday evening for two hours, two, two and a half hours, and go over there and help. As all you do is uh, work the checkout. And you can go over any Tuesday or any Thursday and help out. If you want to do that, write your name down. And we'll get you information. Love, Inc., Love in the Name of Christ is an organization, a clearinghouse in Marion that has recently been totally revamped. And the director is a wonderful person. I go to those meetings roughly once a month when I can make them. And they have connected with agencies in Marion. We help out with gas cards for people who need to get certain places. And those people go through a clearinghouse so that we know they're legit. They need volunteers to answer the phone. They can only be open for a couple of hours in, a mo uh, in the morning because they don't have enough volunteers. We have so many people who are retired. Could you give a couple of hours to them? Neighborhood outreach, once a year, helping kids be prepared for school. And then our neighborhood supper. So many people come to our dinner on a uh, uh, neighborhood supper. They're hungry. They don't have a lot of, foo a lot of um, food or means to have that. You sit down and talk with the people. They're regular people, just like you and I. They need help. People have been doing that for a long time. We need to get some new blood in there. Linda and Charlene do a prison ministry teaching discipleship, and that's been going on for quite some year, many years. But we're starting up a new prison ministry, and Tom is going to be heading this up. Tom and I are going to go back to prison on Tuesday, and I'm hoping they'll keep him this time. But, <coughs> sorry, Tom. No, I'm not. No, I'm not sorry at all. I'm <coughs> we have been talking with um, the assistant warden there, and they're opening up a faith dorm again. They used to have one, they don't now. And it's um, more open. They have a few more privileges and it will be people who are going to focus on building their faith. And they're just starting it and we're going to meet with the chaplains this coming week to see where can we fit in. We're going to be mentors. Is that something you might be called to? There are so many possibilities. 
We have a vision. Well, wait, I have a vision out there, but I'm not ready to talk about that yet. We're starting to build towards that. You're going to see some changes in the church. And some of you will say, I don't know that I like this change. It's going too fast. If we don't change, I know you've heard me say it before. If we don't change and if we don't reach out into the community, we are not going to grow and we're not going to be able to pass on a future to the next generation. So fill these cards out. Pete, would you um, collect them? <coughs> fill these cards out. <coughs> if you're ready, just hold them up and let Pete collect them so I can pray over them. <coughs> this time next year, I'm hoping that what we have listed here will take twice as much space. Anybody who has an idea for a ministry that you want to do, all you have to do is to speak up. Talk to me. Because all ministries are important. The only people who see these cards are um, Erica and Pete. I don't, they pass me the names and uh, the service um, that people want to do, but I do not see anything else. Nobody else does. It's between you and God. Thank you, Pete. We have presented ourselves today as living sacrifices. And this is the representation of that. Let us pray. Oh Lord, in these cards are the commitments people want to make to you. And Lord, I pray that you will strengthen each member, each part of this community of faith so that together we can make a difference for you and in your name. We present ourselves today as holy, living sacrifices for you. Bless us. Bless our desires as we honor you today. In your wonderful name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing our closing song.
is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons that my heart to find. Bless the Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we do indeed worship you in all we do, in all we say, in all we are. So Lord, help us to live as holy sacrifices for you. And we ask all this in your wonderful name. Amen. <laughs> 